Hi everybody, welcome back to the Moscone Center. We're in Moscone West, theCUBE's continuous coverage of RSA 2023. This is day three Wednesday. John Furrier here with me, Dave Vellante. Zias Caravallo is here. He's the man behind ZK Research, friend of theCUBE. Great to see you again. Ah, it's always great to be in theCUBE. You're like a CUBE analyst now. Yeah, I am, yeah. Coming in between <laughs> your, your meetings. Thanks for coming on. So you yeah. know Palo Alto really well. We were at, yeah. we, we were at Ignite in December, um, and you just heard Lee Clarich coming on talking about best of breed, they're both best of breed and platform, integrated platform, and I was kind of skeptical, I'm like, wow, that's never happened before in the, in the industry, is, is, is it actually happening now? Well, I think they're, they're best of breed next gen firewall, I wouldn't say they're best of breed everywhere though, uh, but I, I think the point is, if you build out a platform, you don't need to be best of breed, in fact, uh, everywhere. Um, I had a conversation with the CISO a couple weeks ago who said to me, he finally understands now that with the right platform strategy, if you try and do best of breed everywhere, you actually get less than effective threat protection, right? So the platform strategy actually gives you best in class threat protection without being best of breed everywhere. And that should be Palo Alto's goal. It's to be able to find those threats and remediate against them before anybody else because of the platform, but not thinking about things on a product by product basis. Because if you do that, then you get in a knife fight of my product versus this product, and that defeats the whole point of the platform. Yeah. Because, what are you saying? Because best of breed, like a caravan, has to slow down so everybody can stay together and be coherent, but you're saying a best of breed might create some discontinuity between the rest of the platform. Is that what you're Well, that, especially in right? security, because you got to keep policies up to date, you know, some systems, you know, poll, some use telemetry, and so you wind up with this inconsistent data, right? Like, so we, we talked about the Palo Alto's event. Security today is an analytics game, right? It's, can, yeah, you, yeah. can you analyze the data that you have to be able to find those, yeah. those needles in the stack of needles, yeah. right? And if you're working off your own data set and everything's consistent, you can do that better than if you're trying to cobble together data sets and normalize them things from multiple vendors. So this is, this is exactly what we talked about with Amazon, for example. They have such an observation space, the way they have all that data. You know, like, are we anonymized? Okay, whatever. Um, that's the challenge. I think that's the opportunity for the platform. And you know, I love the platform conversation, these events, because I think it's relevant. But to your point, platform for platform's sake, is not the answer. Yeah. Platform for objective sake is why yeah, you have a platform. Outcomes. Why do you have a platform? So if they can create more observational space, like for example, I asked them about cloud native networking, I didn't really get an answer. Maybe they don't have anything on that, or maybe they do. They said, no, we're building network security in AWS, so we'll check on that. So there's a lot going on in this cloud native networking, because network security is an old school, here's my MPLS, here's my routes on Amazon. Well, and so, Let's, let's uh, call it what that. it is. So, so cloud native security can be everything from providing firewalls in AWS, Azure, GCP, right? And, and Palo can do that better than everybody. But you can also, you then have to think of container security, which they're new to. Also API level security, which is something like, you know, Volterra, which F5 bought, right? There's yeah. Akamai cloud, just bought NeoSec. Yeah, and, and so yeah. cloud native security is, is unpacking that itself yes. is, a, is a pretty big category. I think within the confines of network security, Palo Alto does a great job of cloud native security, but there's a whole other. No, about cloud native networking. Cloud, yes. That, yeah. Yeah. but that should be the same policies right. as network security, right. but it just doesn't seem in most companies that we talk to on theCUBE, they're like, well we have a completely different network security team than the ones on Amazon. Yeah, that's, so that's an interesting trend, right? I was at Fortinet's event, they talked about the convergence of network and security. Uh, Scott Harrell, you know, came from Cisco, went to Infoblox, he was talking about that as well. But when, when I talk to large enterprises, they're not really integrating networking and security. I do see it in the mid-market, and I, I just think a lot of the, you know, a big part of G2 and uh, you know, yeah. uh, uh, Tom's keynote from Cisco was about bringing together network yeah. and security. And when you get into those large enterprises that have all these processes built around these SIMs and you know, these security tools, they haven't integrated the two yeah. together. And I, I think they're, they're susceptible to breaches. I do think it's something they need to do, well, but I, I just think we're a lot Well, I want to get your so, thoughts on, on Dave, yeah. always, oh, Dave always says this on every show we go in security, because it's a great observation. Not any one company has the large market yeah. share. Chambers even said, commented here earlier, like, yeah, that someone's got to come above 20%, and you know, he had 60%. But who's going to break out in your mind? Who are the dark horses? Who's the, the favorite horses that's going to emerge to be more the dominant, platform, company, is it CrowdStrike, is it Zscaler, is it Pan, Palo Alto Networks? Uh, who merges, in your I mean, mind? Microsoft's the biggest, right? I mean, yes. just because they're Microsoft. Microsoft is the biggest, but they're a bit of a, uh, a walled garden. Right, right? So, and so, so of the independents, so let's park yeah. Microsoft for a second, because yeah. they maybe do have 
double digit market. It's hard to tell, but at any rate, yeah. of the independents, who do you think? Yeah, so I like Palo a lot. I, I think their platform strategy is outstanding. I think the way they can build products, you buy products, integrate them in quickly, uh, I think makes a lot of sense. I think um, the stuff Cisco's been talking about, I, when I talk to Cisco, so Cisco's an interesting security <laughs> company because it's a, that expression of fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. I might like fool me seven times now, <laughs> right? Because like, I've been expecting to do something, but if, if network telemetry is a big part of security threat identification, who has more network telemetry than them? Yeah. And I think the new leadership at Cisco, Cisco Tom and G, uh, AWS is getting actually it. understand that, right? Yeah. And so they're not trying to, you know, they, and they understand that they've, their, their, their portfolio, which is Kenna and Talos and Duo and Umbrella, they need to bring those things together. But I, but I think they, I, from my conversation with the leadership, I think they finally, yeah. they finally have it right. Well, Gillis is, it was a great pickup yes. for Cisco. Yeah. I thought, yeah. he, that was, and, and, you know, yeah. and, and I think actually, I think VMware has an okay story in security. They just, they didn't, they didn't tell it at the last well, VMware. Well, they got, I think G2 probably said, hey, G2's Tom, got a, yeah. why yeah. don't you come on over to Cisco because we're really serious about security. Well, G2 yeah. wants and to it, talk, so we'll follow up with them. I got to ask them about the private companies though. Who, what non-public companies do you see out there rising up? in uh, security and or network security, oh, look, just say cloud, security, on-prem, edge, Yeah, who's, who's rising? I, I think Netscope, actually. Uh, yeah, has, Netscope's has, got some momentum. Yeah, they've, they've got a lot of momentum. And I think they, you know, most people thought of them as a, as a CASB vendor and thought of Zscaler as a SWIG, and both those companies are leaders in the Gartner MQ. Uh, I wrote a whole piece on that on Silicon Angle, by the way. Yeah, I saw that. And, uh, uh, but I do think those two companies have broken away from the SSE pack and I think they both have the opportunity to try and create a platform strategy around them. You know, they're a proxy, they do a lot of, they, there's a lot of stuff they don't do, but for what they do, if you believe more and more workloads are moving to the cloud, more workers are moving to home, those two companies actually have a, have a, lot, of, a lot of upside. Well, it's interesting, we, we had Jay Chaudhry on, and he, you know, he didn't mention Palo Alto, but he was just throwing firewalls under the bus any chance that he got. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, but it's you still need firewalls, though. Let's, What's let's, that? Yeah. let's be real, you still you need firewalls. firewalls yeah. Well, yeah. no, you, yeah, yeah. you've made this point a yeah. number of times, but you know, that they don't sell firewalls, yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is the game they play. But so, it's, it's been interesting to watch the security market, because I think there was, a lot of investors said, hey, this market's insulated, and then last summer we saw you know, security sort of reverted to the mean, and then you've seen Palo Alto and Fortinet in particular, yes. and more, more recently CrowdStrike, you know, sort of do really well. You see Zscaler sort of not doing as good as, say, even the NASDAQ, or even the mm -hmm. BUG ETF, they're not really doing as well, so it's really mixed right now. Why do you think that is, and do you think that, that, that these companies are going to come roaring back? I mean, what's your outlook? Well, a lot of Fortinet's growth has been based on their SD-WAN, so this, co this convergence of network and security has actually benefited them more than anybody, right? Because with yeah. them, you just flick on the networking and they're Fortigate. Yeah. Uh, but, I, but I think you know, security is always, uh, I, I do think a lot of what drove Zscaler and Netscope, that type of growth, was people working from home. Right? And now that we're, companies are starting to bring people back to the office, they need to rethink what, what exactly are we doing? We brought in a lot of technology. How do we integrate it together? And uh, I, I think that's causing a bit of a pause in buying, which is uh, why you saw some of the security vendors take up a little bit. You but, mean the transition back to hybrid work? Yeah. because People it are trying to figure that out. Yeah, yeah. Like because who am I going to have in the office? Yeah. But you, I can't really figure out what to secure or even how to enable them to work if I don't know what that work style is. And um, one of the predictions I made at the beginning of the year from a UC perspective, and it holds true with security, is that hybrid work this year yeah. will be a disaster because companies don't know how to implement it. <laughs> I think you're right. You're yeah. right. I think you're right <laughs> on that it's, one. It's sort of landing on, okay, Monday, Friday, you work from home, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you come in. It's very easy, it's a, it, but it's so easy to solve. It's end-to-end -end security. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, it's I, end-to-end security. So it, the policies are got to move from the network to the to the edge, to the handheld, to the virtual desktop, so I'm a user, you got to know when I'm in the office. But, but, it should, it, independent of, of the infrastructure. But a lot of offices. The infrastructure should be smart enough to know that, hey, yeah, John's in the not, office. Right? Well, so that's my point. That's the problem. A lot that's of office point. infrastructure was, was. Well, no, I'm just saying, I just say it's a simple problem to solve. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. a lot of office infrastructure wasn't invested in for two years, yeah. right, during the yeah. pandemic, and now they had to catch up. Well, that's why I was asking probably thought about security. Well, no, I mean, I mean, no, there's, there's some structural do. changes, but the, the answer is simple. The getting there is hard. Yeah. Chambers, I asked Chambers the same question. What's that startup that's going to come out of the woodwork and like slay this 
domain legacy dogma of this is the way it was. Well, what do you? And, I don't see. I don't think. I don't see I, that uh, some startup all of a sudden coming in and taking a big share. Well, I, I mean, if, you're, if, you, run, if you run cloud native oh, networking yeah, I mean, and on-premise right. networking with, tied to the cloud, you can tie your app directly into the cloud native network. Yeah, but you, you, I mean, I, I would be I would be personally shocked to see some kind of startup all of a sudden come in and grab 20% market share in this oh, market. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, just, well, I mean, not, I just, not from zero to 20%. Well, that that was the scenario. Either one of my companies does that or they get bought. Guess what scenario is more likely? You know, yeah, they're going to get bought. bought. <laughs> because more and more, again, security is a game of analytics. And who, you know, the company that has the biggest data set that they can apply machine learning to I think is the one that's ultimately going to win this, right? And so, but that's why acquisitions do become important. Mm -hmm. You do need to be able to bring the, the, the API level data in, yeah. but be able to see what's going on there and combine it yeah. with login yeah. data from your VPN client yeah. and network data you know, from, yeah. from the stuff that's moving your network. And it's the correlation of those things that lets you find those things that are impossible to find you know, through a SIM. I, you know, one of the things we didn't talk about too was what security industries are going to fall, <laughs> right? And I, and I do what, think- do What's going to fall? Uh, what, what parts of the security industry are likely to see a downturn, yeah. right? And I, and I think, um, you know, uh, pure endpoint plays, you, you just don't have enough visibility into the rest of the spectrum. And I think SIMs, I, I've long been a SIM skeptic because every time we have a breach, some SIM vendor says we caught it, right? Well, if you caught it, your when customer didn't see it, I don't think that counts, exactly. right? And, and so I, I think a whole uh, rethink of that industry is needed because, yeah. you, know, log, you know, logs for log, log uh, uh, log analysis for, you know, that just provides you a whole bunch of data doesn't really do yeah. anybody any good. The platform. Could they, can they transform though? Can those guys like take, you know, sort of a modern data stack and then add in some, you know, not just the sort of log data, but actually some, some response and remediation and the sort of move, can, can they do that? I yeah, mean, I you, think so. If they, you were the head of a CEO of a SIM company, yeah. right, what, what would you do? Yeah, well they, gotta, they, gotta, they have a ton of data Right? But I don't think they do a very good job of, of analyzing them. Most of it's reactive. But I think they have to partner with the threat intel companies and be able to, to, yeah. to, to look outside of their, um, you know, of their domain of, of what they hold. Because they got a lot of interesting data, but in itself in isolation only has limited Yeah, I mean, value. that thinks your point. I mean, the data perspective is huge. Cribble's announcement with CrowdStrike I thought was interesting. You follow the Cribble deal yeah. they just did. Yeah. It's a great tool. It pulls data in very quickly and they're eating Splunk's lunch. Yeah. Um, just a nice startup, the very unique product and it's about moving data into these platforms. I would like to see the security industry actually uh, get together and develop some real standards too because a lot of what you see is you know, Fortinet partners with Palo, who partners with Cisco, and they integrate data together. But a lot of that's manual yeah. integration done through APIs. And so there's a, 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 a large amount of heavy lifting, right? Where I think one of the things the security industry has missed historically is if you make things interoperable, right? And you, you, know, you think of the way networks work. I can plug a Juniper AP into a Cisco switch. I know it's going to work. Well, that creates this uplift of yes. utilization. And the security industry has lived the life of islands yep. <laughs> and, and almost in opposition to what the customers need. And I think I would like to see, um, you know, AWS is trying this, I guess, but somewhere along the line, we need some standards here that yeah. develop, that uh, companies can build to, to make the stuff more interoperable. And then, then let the best platform win, like yeah. the best analytics win. And the fragmentation. We stop, we stop thinking about these knife fights of this first, this yeah, it's a knife fight injury. So yeah. would that be your top story coming out of here? So what people watching RSA 2023, what would the be the big walk away story from your perspective as you ton, tons of meetings and talk to all the vendors? What's the big, you go to the balcony, look down at the stage, what's? Well from the way I look at the world, I think it is the coming together of networking and security. Um, because it's, and we'll see how far that goes up market, uh, but more and more vendors are actually coming at it, you know, Think of VMware as a network company, they're more into security. Cisco is the same thing. All the network security vendors are now trying to do more networking. I think one of the interesting things that has flown under the radar a little bit is what is the future role of SecOps though? Because everybody I talk to, you know, I talked to JFrog, they said, well, DevOps and SecOps are coming together, right? VMware is going to tell you that CloudOps and SecOps are coming together. Palo say NetOps and SecOps are coming Well, if everything's coming together with SecOps, right, what's the role of SecOps and perhaps the answer is SecOps should determine policy, but then each individual group implements them yeah. themselves, right? Because, and it winds up becoming diffused through every organization. It's just like, you know, I remember when I started my career, the companies I worked at, we had an internet group, 
right? Yeah. To think about, nobody has that now because it's just it's a internet. better part of what you do. <laughs> and, 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 and what about data ops? Yeah. Check. Yeah. <laughs> but security ops Tech can't just become up, can't come together with every group. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's can, my point. Yeah. Is like, right, so, because you, you, you've said a couple times that basically security is a data problem, and you've got this data group, you know, it's kind of off doing their own thing, like analytics rock stars and data scientists, you know, are, 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 are you going to lend you some of their time or loan some of their time, you know, or are you going to build your own? What's the right data strategy for companies? Yeah, well, I think it's a combination of your own data plus the vendor, the vendor supply data. Because the vendors, the, the thing is, the threat intel groups of, um, of these vendors have a, just a ton of data they're Maybe collecting. Maybe like a Unit 42 yeah, or unit, Mandiant. Yeah, or Talos example, or, or you know, yeah, groups yeah. like that, right? There's, because um, uh, they're aggregating data across their customer base, but then the data that the co company has is unique to them, right? People work in certain ways or whatever. And if you just, you know, think of your own company. If, you know, you start logging in all of a sudden at different times, that's a pretty good indicator that, you know, maybe there's something where somebody hacked your account or something, right? right so, right. Yeah. but I think it's a combination of the company's data applied to the aggregate uh, threat hunting data that's out there. So. Awesome, cool. What about, I mean, a lot of talk about generative AI, you know, generative models and large that's language models. That's back to models. SecOps, I do mean. You, do, you, do you, are you, what do you think about that? You think it's mostly hype? Do you think is are you are you an optimist in terms of it being applied to the industry, or is it just a <laughs> bunch of bullshit? Uh, well, I I think generative AI is being used to create better and better uh, phishing attacks, spear phishing campaigns, and things like that. Because now with with generative AI, you should never have a phishing email that comes to you with a spelling error. In it. You should you should be able to write it in you know to one of your employees in your tone and perfect the way you grammar, talk. Perfect right? Right, perfect. It should you could be able to replicate people's voices, right, it, it perfectly. And I think we we haven't really explored what the fraudster use of generative AI is, and I think that's that's still yet to be seen. I and I think it's going to have a huge impact. And and I think you need generative AI. This is a little bit of fight fire with fire. You and this is where companies need to really rethink their security strategies. You cannot fight AI-based security with manual processes. You, it's too slow and it doesn't work. And the great thing about AI is you could have ChatGPT create me 10 variants of this malware and only one of them has to work. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. So it's you're basically developer saying, productivity you, meets yeah. uh, you're, back You're basically saying, which is no surprise, the adversaries are going to figure it out first yeah. and they're ahead. Because there's the more money in yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, And no it's doubt. easier now. Yeah, it's, it's back, to your, uh, back to your, your analytics play, because I think, I think it's going to be a data opportunity. Whoever can get that data to fight fire in your, your instance, and then also use it for um, defense, it's yeah. really going to be critical. Well, that's why the platform strategy is important, and that's why, to your point, Dave, I don't know if a small startup can come out of nowhere now yeah. and, and, um, and do that, maybe as an Unless it's company. completely game-changing, it's yeah. out of left field, no one sees it. But then somebody would buy them. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the, the question. Thing is, you know? They may I mean, come yeah. out with a best-of-breed tool you know, that, that has the potential to be a platform, and there's a number of companies out there that are trying to do that, but it's just, how long does it take to get a platform adopted in, in cyber? I mean, it's, a, it's eight, yeah. 10 yeah. years. It's yes, a, it's and it's generational. And you need critical mass in a couple of areas in order to call yourself a platform. And a lot of the really interesting innovations coming out of Israel, and those companies are, you know, they're going to get bought. Yeah, right? the M&A market's going to be hot. Yeah. yeah. All right, so it's awesome as always to see you. Thanks for making some time yeah. for us. Always happy to be here. <laughs> All right, uh, Dave Vellante for John Furrier. Great stuff. And our guest, we'll be back right after this short break. The Cube live from RSA 2023.